It's time to once again get to the chopper as we explore the action-packed science fiction masterpiece Predator. Released in 1987, Predator has become one of the most celebrated movies of its time. Heck, of all time, and for good reason. It has excitement, tension, great special effects that still hold up, and, well, it's just generally badass. In this adventure, we follow a group of commandos on a mission in a jungle, where they fall prey to a technologically advanced alien monster, who not only has high-tech weaponry, but can also make itself invisible, which leads to a one-man stand between Dutch, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the terrifying being from beyond our comprehension, in an epic showdown of man versus beast. So today we're going back to Predator to explore 10 more things that you didn't know about this classic alien movie. So sit back and get ready to chew some tobacco, which apparently makes you a sexual Trinosaurus, as we check it out. Number 10, Original Script Ideas Predator was written by scriptwriting brothers Jim Thomas and John Thomas, and it's famously known that the idea of this movie came to be because after the release of Rocky IV, someone made a joke saying, who is Rocky going to fight next, an alien? Although, the original script was quite different to the final film. Now, it was always to be set in a South American jungle. However, there originally was meant to be an army of brutal aliens hunting one lone commando, which is actually the opposite of what we saw in the final film, where there was one alien with a heap of human commandos. As the script progressed, it was decided to just make it one alien, as we see in the final film. The original script was also described as being a more low-grade pulp story. But when 20th Century Fox got involved along with producer Joel Silver, Silver took inspiration from another action movie that he had just produced, Commando, where like that movie, he felt that this story of man versus alien in a jungle should be a big budget spectacular movie event. And so really, Commando played a big part in the creation of Predator. And although the idea of multiple Predators didn't happen in this film, the idea would be recycled for Predators. Number 9. The director kind of saw Predator as a King Kong remake. So with Predator going into production, the search was on to find a director to helm this big action-packed testosterone fueled spectacle. At one stage, New Zealand director Jeff Murphy was considered, probably because he had just previously directed a science fiction movie called The Quiet Earth. However, the director they went with was John McTiernan. Although in hindsight, he would have seemed like the perfect choice, thanks to directing other big-scale action movies like Die Hard and The Hunt for Red October. When he was hired to direct Predator, he actually hadn't directed a big studio movie before, just a low-key horror movie called Nomads. (laughs) I've never seen it. So at the time, it may have seemed like a gamble to go with him, but it was one that definitely paid off. Interestingly, despite the movie's original premise of a tough Rocky-like character fighting an alien, McTiernan saw Predator as being more akin to King Kong, in that it's about a group of characters who find themselves in an isolated jungle environment, completely off the grid from society, only to discover something bigger than they can comprehend, a fierce beast monster, to which the characters then have to run away from. Yeah, I can actually see that connection. Predator is kind of like King Kong, only given a Rambo and alien twist. Number 8. The Man Behind the Makeup So Predator could have been a very different movie to the one we ended up with. Not only was it going to be called Hunter, but the alien Predator himself was a not-so-threatening-looking lizard-slash-insect creature, played by Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, as the cameras started rolling and this alien beast was walking around the set, I think it was clear that things just weren't working, and that it was obvious that changes were required. So who else better to bring in than the master of movie makeup effects himself, Stan Winston? 
Not only had Winston already worked with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the Terminator, but he also brought the aliens to life in Aliens, as well as the monsters in Monsters Squad. And so, with an updated design and a new performer playing the part, that being Peter Kevin Hall, a classic movie monster was created. Some early designs are interesting though, as they show the Predator as we know him, only he's bald. God, just stick some aviators on him and he'll look like me. And of course, Stan Winston would really go on to outdo himself with his efforts in Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park. They were literally just around the corner from Predator. Number 7. The Soldiers were designed after comic book characters. It was when movie tough guy Arnold Schwarzenegger was handed the script that further changes were made. Arnie didn't like the idea that the story would have been about just his character and the alien. He felt that the movie should focus on a group of commandos, not just one. Where the movie starts off as a rescue team action adventure movie, where it then descends into science fiction alien horror. So this is how we got the other characters, which included Carl Weathers as Dylan, Bill Duke as Mac Elliott, and Jesse Ventura as Cooper, and you know, so on. Needless to say, they are all memorable characters. The look of the commandos as we see them in the movie are designed after characters from the DC comic book, Sergeant Rock. The Sergeant Rock comics is a popular series of army orientated comics that started in the 1950s. And as a little wink wink nudge nudge to the comic's influence to the Commando's designs in Predator, during the end credits, Shane Black can be seen reading a Sergeant Rock comic book. You know, just paying a little homage to its influence. Number 6. Filming Despite being set in the fictional jungle of Val Verde, most of the movie's shoot took place in the Mexican jungles of Puerto Vallarta and Palenque. Apologies if I've mispronounced them, you know, I am a bit of a devil. <laughs> and filming at the locations were not easy. The cast and crew were constantly dealing with disease and near unbearable working conditions. Firstly, the cast was constantly filming on tough terrain. Schwarzenegger claimed that they would spend their days filming on a hill, with one leg up and one leg down, as well as filming in leech-infested stagnant water. Ugh. The jungle locations were also freezing, so much so heating lamps would have to be placed around the jungle set in order to try and keep the actors warm. Apparently it was felt that the trees in some of the locations didn't have enough leaves, so a cluster of fake leaves would have to be brought in and placed on the trees. In order to film the last fight scene, Arnie had to spend three weeks covered in cold mud. Arnie found the whole ordeal to be physically demanding, so in order to keep fit, he had exercise equipment shipped to the Mexico location, where according to Carl Weathers, at 3.30 every morning, all the tough guy actors would go and start working out, and keep in training. The cast and crew also suffered diarrhea while filming, due to poor water standards at the hotel that they were staying in. The filming actually came to a stop so Arnie could travel back to the States and get married, of which he could only spend three days on his honeymoon so he could go back to filming as soon as possible. So in essence, this was one mean tough shoot, and it didn't have the glamour and glitz, but more the armour and shits. As in, they literally had the shits. Ah, I got the diarrhea! Sorry, I won't do that again. Number 5. Being the Predator was a Nightmare So can we just take a moment to appreciate Predator actor Kevin Peter Hall and just what he had to endure while playing the Predator? Now Hall was no stranger to performing in heavy makeup, having previously played Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. But it sounds like playing the Predator nearly broke the performer, with him describing working on Predator as quote, It wasn't a movie, it was a survival story for all of us. Firstly, his Predator costume weighed 200 pounds, which was a strain on Hall and an endurance, which actually really affected his balance. He also couldn't see out of the damn thing, so all the physical scenes with the Predator, whether he's fighting with Arnie or running in the jungle, had to be done with Hall rehearsing without the makeup on, and then memorising his surroundings when performing as the Predator, as he once again couldn't see a thing. But not even that helped at times, as during the fight scene with Arnie, Hall was meant to make it look like he's fighting Arnie, but wasn't supposed to actually hit Arnie's face. You know, pretend to. But nope, on the account that he couldn't see, on one occasion, Arnie actually got a wallop from Hall's predator claw-ridden hand. 
Hole also had to act in foul leech-ridden jungle water. So, he wasn't having a good time. And due to being stuck behind all that makeup, director John McTiernan also cast him as the helicopter pilot, so at least at one stage during the movie, people can still see his face. Despite the hardships that he had to endure while filming, Hall would actually return for Predator 2. But sadly, he passed away in 1991. For his efforts, Kevin Peter Hall deserves way more recognition. After all, he gave life to the Predator. He is to the Predator character what, say, David Prowse is to Darth Vader. Number 4. Other Effects Stan Winston's glorious movie makeup aside, other special effect techniques would have to be used in order to create this action-packed science fiction spectacle. For example, the Predator's green blood came from glow sticks. Yep. Simple, but effective glow sticks. Be that the green liquid mixed with a lubricant. <laughs> lubricant. <coughs> In order to film the Predator's thermal vision, the crew had tried to actually film with a thermal camera, but the effect just wasn't working. So normal footage was shot and then converted into negative prints, with the bright thermal heat vision colors being added optically in post. Although negative film and glow stick goop may not sound top tier when it comes to movie special effects, Predator was still nominated for an Academy Award for Best Special Effects. So yep, all you need sometimes is some negative prints and a glow stick. The odd few times we hear the Predator talk and make other vocal noises were actually provided by voice actor Peter Cullen, aka Optimus Prime from Transformers. It's official, the Predator and Optimus Prime are one and the same. Shhh. Number three, music. Now it's time to talk about the awesome music featured in Predator. The badass macho theme was composed by the great Alan Silvestri. He scored the movie coming off his success with Back to the Future. In fact, the Predator score is my second favourite of his themes after the as-for-mentioned Back to the Future. Just listening to the main theme for Predator gets my adrenaline pumping and makes me want to go on an action-packed mission where no doubt I'll need to get to the chopper. In fact, 1987 would have been a very busy year for Mr. Silvestri, as along with Predator, that year he scored four movies. The others being Critical Condition, Outrageous Fortune, and Overboard. Wow, no wonder Predator sounds so action-orientated and badass. He was probably sick to death of scoring comedies at that stage. In fact, this was a time when Silvestri was just knocking movie themes out the park, as shortly after Predator, he also scored Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Abyss. It's awesome scores like the Predator one that reminds us just how important movie scores truly are. Number 2. Deleted Scenes There are several deleted scenes that have been unearthed over the years that didn't make it into the final cut of Predator. These include an entire action sequence of Dutch running around the jungle where the Predator is messing with his head. You know, trying to screw with him and get him all scared and terrified and keep him on his feet. Where the Predator is successful in freaking him out by nearly shooting him in the head with his alien tech. Where the whole jungle erupts into an explosion. Also in this sequence, there's a shot where while hiding from the Predator, Dutch finds that he has a heap of ants on his back, which is very, you know, Indiana Jones-ish. There are also additional shots of Dutch preparing for his final battle against the Predator, where we see him setting up some traps and putting together a spear. Other scenes involve the Anna character waking up in the night where she discovers a chameleon lizard. I guess creating a parallel between the lizard and the Predator's invisibility cloaking device. And I guess this scene would have made more sense with the Predator's original design where he kind of did look like a lizard. Maybe that's why the scene was cut. And this one shot, which I actually really like, where a butterfly lands on the Predator while in its invisibility mode, where the butterfly leaves a sort of imprint of itself on the Predator. Yeah, none of these scenes were particularly needed, and I don't think they would have made the movie better if they were added, but it's still fun exploring lost footage of a classic movie. Number 1. Hunting for Success Predator was a massive success when it came out in June 1987, where it made over $98 million on its $15 to $18 million budget, with it having the second highest opening of that year after Beverly Hills Cop 2. Now if you can believe it, Predator didn't get the best reviews from critics. 
It was felt that the movie was dull and grisly, with the movie being called empty, derivative and predictable. One of the more positive reviews came from Variety, which described the movie as slightly above average, further stating though that Predator has a tissue thin plot. So yeah, that review was kind of like a compliment wrapped up in an insult, or an, an insult wrapped up in a compliment. Okay, I don't know what happened back then in 1987. Maybe all these critics just had a bad day. I don't know. But I think it's obvious from the start of the movie onwards, you're watching a very spectacular movie. A true classic. A genre-defying romp, of which similar movies onwards would strive to be. Where just like classic villains of cinema like Dracula, Darth Vader, Freddy Krueger, The Terminator, and of course Alien, a newfound celebrated movie monster had now arrived in the realm of pop culture in the form of the alien predator. A monster that you can't see who will ruthlessly hunt you down just for sport. But this creature also has the ability to fight with honour. Predator is often considered one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time, as well as one of the best action movies. Heck, it often makes it onto lists of best movies of the 80s, and even best movies in general. So despite the critics' initial snobbery of Predator, it has become a well-loved classic, and is now regarded as a masterpiece. And for good reason. This movie is definitely a non-stop, action-packed romp, of which no matter how many times you watch it, it will always get your adrenaline pumping. Yeah, awesome! I would tell you all to go and watch it, but chances are you've already seen it. I mean, heck, it's Predator. Everyone's seen it and everyone loves it. So I couldn't possibly give it any more praise than what it already has. But I would definitely say go back and watch it again. It would make your afternoon better and a little bit more badass. And I would say that I can't stress just how much I love this film, but once again, pretty much everyone else already has. Anyway, I'm Minty. And remember, if it bleeds, we can kill it. See ya!